offering better returns to investors. So profit as a means, profit not being the end, and that makes it really different. The entire outlook between a social enterprise and a, and a commercial enterprise. Let me take it to the next level, and I, call, and I see it as a, the heights of social entrepreneurship. In my view, when a social enterprise is owned by the poor, nothing like it. Now these enterprises that I mentioned earlier were owned. I'm not suggesting that that is the best form of social enterprise, but I'm suggesting that actually depicts the height of social enterprise, right? That's very powerful because Amul is really that, and that is then a movement. It is not an organization. It transcends organizational boundaries, and then you're building an institution, and you're not building for-profit organizations, right? So that's that's the other piece. Related to that piece is also a very important thought. Many of these organizations let their model, of course, they scale by themselves. They allow a lot of replication to happen. But most importantly, they taught others to freely copy their model. And therefore, they were creating a public good by actually making sure that their models were available free to all. And that, I think, is a, another level of uh, social consciousness in that enterprise. When we are in an era where we have to brand, we have to franchise, you still can do it. But you still can make it available to you. Yeah, you own it, but you still make it available. And that is, I think, a heightened uh, sense of social entrepreneurship. And I think that's that's a, that's that's a way to go. And these companies that I talked about, who I consider as amazing social enterprises, have proven some of that. 